Hello everyone, Scott Haskin here to talk about the song Silent Night, Dreadful Night. Um, this one was uh, one that I I just started it and had no idea where, where the story was going to go. Um, I just had an idea that there was some night that everybody expected to save them from whatever the plight was going to be and uh, didn't know what was going to happen from there. But I've seen so many of these movies where you know, it, it take like uh, the Karate Kid or a movie like that where, you know, there's a bunch of bad things going on. Somebody's got to come in and put a stop to it. So somebody starts learning what's going on. They start training. They start doing what they need for, you know, the final battle at the end where, you know, the movie tells us the hero's going to win and uh, everything's going to be fine. And, you know, maybe one or two of the bullies will be like, hey, I'm sorry, you know, I shouldn't be a bad person or whatever. And maybe things change after. Uh, how long? Of course, we never find out. But the, the idea of that was kind of what started it. The, uh, you know, something horrible is going on. We need a, a shining white, nar white armor knight to come in and make everything better. And so I started thinking about it and I thought, you know, what's, what's interesting about these things, though, unless it's like one of those movies where the guy's a special forces agent, he's already got all this Navy SEAL training and whatever, he, and, and is capable of handling the situation, what actually happens when they put it into practice because they can spar but they're not sparring in real life you know it's it's a protected battle so they're not really in danger and what happens the first time they're actually put to the test is the actual urgency whatever's going on like they're there to fix it and now is the time but they're not battle hardened they don't have that experience or uh knowledge or uh, instincts, perhaps, to really take care of themselves in a situation like that. And of course, in a movie, it just works. It always does. That's Hollywood for you. Um, everything's going to be fine. But in the real world, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. So I started thinking about it. I'm like, what happens though? This guy, you know, he practices, he practices, he's confident. Everybody's like, oh, yay, this guy. And, you know, he's here to save us. And then the battle comes and he freezes. And now everyone's like, well, crap, what do we do now? Well, they get slaughtered, of course, because they were just standing there waiting for him to solve all their problems instead of solving them themselves. So this really is kind of the uh, how I think this would play out. And well, I sounded like I had a Canadian accent there. Play out, play out, how it would play out. And they go into battle. He can't do it. He freezes up. Uh, the enemy is fully ready to admit he lost. And, and and he's waiting to die, and it doesn't happen. And he looks up and he sees this, you know, this boy hero just shaking and crying. And, you know, he can't kill somebody because he's never had to kill somebody before. He hasn't suffered as, as all these other people have because, A, he's a young boy. And, B, he's been busy training while everyone else has been suffering. So he doesn't even feel the stakes of what he's battling for. He just knows that everybody expects him to do it. So all these things hit him at once, right when he's supposed to kill the enemy and save the town. And all it would take is just letting the sword fall, cut the guy's head off. Everyone's saved. Everyone's happy. He's adored for years. But no, he can't do it. So, of course, the opposition just comes in and takes control of the village and everything's theirs now and everybody that was opposing them if they didn't kill them they imprisoned them and you know the people that are imprisoned are like this sucks screw you guy that didn't save us that we invested in even though we didn't want to actually do anything we expected you to do it all so it's kind of a, a little bit of an irony that um that they end up the prisoners when they could have done something perhaps like learned how to fight themselves and at least been helpful you know, more than they were. Um, and of course the boy dies and they make a, a symbol of his, what's left of his head. And so these people start singing the song, which of course then becomes masked by history because history, although it's written by the victor, you know, there are people that are like, you know what, this sucks. We don't want to tell that story. So they just change the words. And over time it becomes this, you know, beautiful, uh, silent night, holy night. Um, but certainly that was not the case. And um, that is the story of Silent Night, Deadly Night.